Welcome back everyone. Today I have an extra special treat for you. We're making perfect crust pizza at home and my kale Caesar salad. We'll get to the pizza in a minute. It cooks so fast that I wanna have my salad done first. I'm also using raw garlic in this dressing. Raw garlic is so good for you. It also gets more flavorful the longer it sits. So I wanna do this first so my salad can sit and marinate while we make the pizza. Let's start with our dressing. This isn't just any regular Caesar salad. This is a vegan Caesar salad dressing. We'll start with two cloves of pressed garlic. And I like to press my garlic here. When you press garlic, the flavor is stronger, but it also releases enzymes and it becomes even better for you the longer it sits. One and two. Just get all of it in the bottom of your bowl. Perfect. I'm going to whisk my dressing right in the bottom of this bowl, so I'll just put all of my ingredients right in. Next up is raw tahini paste. This is what makes our salad creamy. It has a wonderful nutty flavor. Raw tahini paste is actually just ground sesame seeds. It's very healthy and it's very great in flavor too. So three tablespoons of raw tahini paste. Once you have the Caesar salad, you'll probably never want a regular Caesar salad again. So that was three tablespoons of tahini paste. Next, we'll use raw apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has wonderful health benefits and it also tastes delicious. We'll do two tablespoons. Once you bring your raw apple cider vinegar home from the store, keep it in the refrigerator. That preserves the enzymes in it. Two tablespoons of raw apple cider vinegar. Next up, a tablespoon of tamari. Tamari is just gluten-free soy sauce. If you don't have any on hand, you could just use low sodium soy sauce. This will actually replace the salt in our dressing. Because this has enough salt in it, we don't even need to add any extra. And finally, about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Lemon juice is always in a classic Caesar salad. Let me grab my citrus press. I always like to use my citrus press because of course citrus is expensive and this will save us some money by getting all of the juice out. <laughs> Depending on your lemon, you'll either use half of a lemon or a whole. I'll just put the whole thing in. I'm not adding any anchovies to this to keep it vegan, but between the tamari and the tahini, both have such a wonderful rich flavor, you won't even miss the anchovies. Let's just whisk this up. and I'll let this sit until all the flavors come together. Let's talk about our kale. A lot of people don't like to eat kale or cook with kale because they don't like the taste. What they don't realize is it's important that you actually massage the kale, which I know might sound kind of silly, but once you do this, you will love to eat kale at home. I have two types of kale here. I like to mix my kales. You can use any kale that's a really good price at the store. This black kale is sometimes called Tuscan kale, is really, really soft. If it has a really thick rib in it, you can cut it out, or it's soft enough that you can eat it. To stem the kale, just pull it back a little bit and curl your fingers over, and then just rip the stem right out. Next up is my curly kale. Curly kale is a little bit more tough than the black kale. I don't always massage black kale, but this curly kale definitely needs to be massaged. You stem it the same way. If you have a juicer at home, you can juice these or you can just put them in the compost or discard them. Let's tear this up into bite-sized pieces. You can of course chop this, but I think it's just as easy to tear it up. Now that my kale is all torn, we need to massage it. Some people say you need to put oil on it to massage it. You can just massage it raw. You wanna do it for about two minutes and this will reduce in size almost by about half. So let's just dig in. <laughs> now 
Now that my kale is massaged, I'll just add it to my dressing and let this marinate while we make my perfect crust pizza. This already smells like Caesar salad. Right before I serve this, I add two tablespoons of raw hemp seeds just to add a little protein and texture. Perfect, gotta taste it. One piece for the chef. Mmm, that's so good. And the longer it sits, the better it will get. Let's move on to our pizza. Let me make one thing clear. Pizza is definitely not a health food. However, I think it's really important to learn how to cook your favorite foods at home. You can control the quality of ingredients and you'll save a lot of money as well. This is a great Friday night meal. I do this about once a month with my friends and we all love it. I also bought my pizza dough and pizza sauce today. It's totally okay to take some help from the store. Just read your ingredients. The only thing you need in pizza dough is flour, yeast, water, and salt. When you're shopping for sauce, look for something with no sugar added and nothing with preservatives. I also like to buy sauce with San Marzano tomatoes. They're a lot sweeter and make a way better sauce. This is what I've been waiting to show you, how to get the absolute perfect crust at home. You'll actually want to get a pizza stone. My pizza stone is very well worn. When you buy a new one, it's a lot lighter in color. I've had this one for about 10 years. It's such a great investment and they're not very expensive. We want to put this in the oven and get it really, really hot. Then our pizza will cook in about seven or eight minutes and it will be the perfect texture. So let's get this into the oven and preheat it at 475 degrees. We want to let it preheat for at least 30 minutes so it can actually come up to temperature. I'll get this in the oven and then we'll roll out our pizza dough. To give a shout out to traditional Supreme Pizza, I'm going to use some black olives, red onion, and green bell pepper. To amp up the nutrition, I'm also going to add some spinach and I'm going to use goat cheese instead of regular mozzarella cheese. I prefer goat cheese just because I like the taste. It's also a little bit healthier for you. Goat cheese has medium chain fatty acids and cow's milk cheese has long chain fatty acids. Medium chain fatty acids are easier to digest. There's my red onion. We're actually going to saute these before we put them on the pizza. This cooks so fast in the oven that the veggies won't have time to cook. So you wanna saute them first. I don't use green bell peppers very often, but they really do give such a distinct flavor to pizza. My veggies are done. Let's saute these in some olive oil for about five to seven minutes until they're soft, and then we'll be ready to assemble our pizza. My veggies are perfect. I'll set them off to the side so that we can assemble our pizza. I just sauteed my peppers and onions and the last couple of minutes I threw in my spinach and the olives. The olives are already cooked, I just wanted to heat them up a little bit. Now our pizza stone is in the oven, so you might be thinking, how are we going to get this pizza onto the pizza stone? Here's my trick. I'm actually going to roll it out onto parchment paper. If you've ever seen me cook, you know that I love parchment paper. It's so versatile in the kitchen. We're just gonna roll this out on the parchment paper. Then I have my old pizza pan here that I don't even cook pizza on, and I use it to transfer it to the oven. We actually put the pizza on the parchment paper straight onto the pizza stone. Four minutes in, we pull the parchment paper out and it finishes cooking on the pizza stone. The first thing you wanna do is put just a sprinkle of flour right onto the parchment paper. I normally don't even have flour in my house, but for this, I always buy some in the bulk section. Let your pizza dough come to room temperature. It's easier to roll out and it will bake better. Add a little bit of flour to your rolling pin too. It makes it much easier. Now 
that I have my pizza dough rolled out, let me just clean off my hands. Here's the trick. I actually like to put a little bit of olive oil on it, just to give it some more flavor. I just use my fingers for this part. Spread it out. And a big pinch of garlic salt. You wanna flavor this as it goes because this doesn't have any flavor in it. I also take a fork and just do holes all over the pizza. It will still rise, but this prevents the big bubbles from coming up. This crust will be really chewy on the inside and really crispy on the outside. It's perfect. Now it's time for our sauce. And like I said, it's absolutely fine to take some help from the store. Just look for something with no sugar added and no preservatives. I also like to buy sauce that already has garlic in it. If you don't have any garlic in your sauce, it would be great to saute some with your veggies and add that as well. You can put as much sauce as you want. I like about a cup and a half. Your pizza doesn't have to be perfectly round either. I think it's even more fun when it's not. And I like my sauce to go to the edges. The fun part about this is you can assemble your pizza however you want. This is perfect, let's add our veggies and then a sprinkle of goat cheese. Then move your veggies around so they cover the whole pizza. This looks perfect. It's time for the goat cheese. You can put as much on as you want. I've got about three ounces here. I love goat cheese. If you don't like it, you can skip it or use something else. I, of course, just recommend that you use the healthiest ingredients you can find. You can do this with just about anything, making any kind of flatbreads. You can change up the flavors. You could do something with a fig sauce to make it sweet. Anytime you're at a restaurant and you see a flatbread that you like, just write down the ingredients and then you can use that to make this. Let's get this into the oven. This looks absolutely perfect. Like I mentioned, I'll use my pizza pan here. And I just slide it right on and I'll show you how I put it in the oven. Just be very careful because this is very hot. Our pizza's been in for four minutes. Let's take the parchment paper out. Again, this is the way you get the perfect crust. Just be careful, this pizza stone is so hot. The parchment paper is fine to touch, just don't touch anything else. Back into the oven for three or four minutes and we'll have perfectly cooked crust. It's time to take our pizza out of the oven. The pizza stone is so hot, you wanna leave it in there. Let me show you how I take the pizza out. Just use your tongs and your pizza pan. This looks absolutely perfect. Again, pizza is not a health food, but as a health coach, I really believe in balance. And if you can learn to make your favorite foods at home, you can control the quality of ingredients and really enjoy yourself. I like to cut this into squares because of the shape, but you can cut it any way you want. You can hear how perfectly crispy the crust is. It'll be chewy on the inside and crispy on the outside. And then back the other way. This will also save you a lot of money too. When you usually go to a nice pizza place, after a pizza, a bottle of wine, and dessert, you're in at least $100. I made this whole meal for less than 20. I have some basil here that I got out of my garden. I'm just gonna tear a few pieces for the top. The basil alone smells amazing. Okay. And then some crushed red pepper flakes to finish it off. If you don't like the heat, leave that off. All right, let's plate this up. I have my kale Caesar, and I sprinkled two tablespoons of hemp seeds on here. 
Again, just for some extra crunch and for more protein as well. It smells like a pizza parlor in here. Do my kale salad. I am a health coach, so I have to have half of my plate as a salad. And some pizza. Let me show you how perfect this crust turned out. It's perfectly crispy on the bottom and chewy on the middle. I think I'll take my pizza first. Here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This makes me so happy. If you want more recipes like these, head on over to my blog at elizabethrider.com and subscribe to my email list. I'll see you guys next time.